Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Monday, uh, September 12th, 2016. And this is a market recap. Uh, if you haven't caught up yet, I did an extensive uh, video overview on the markets, long-term, intermediate-term outlook, support resistance levels. Uh, that was posted over the weekend. Uh, there were some updates I made today. So this will be, I'll try to keep it as quick as possible, just recap what happened today. And um, again, not really get too much into the long-term stuff here. Uh, so what we had, what happened today, uh, and it comes, of course, on the heels of Friday's breakdown. And as I mentioned, uh, by just about every metric and all accounts that I that I use in my trading, Friday's breakdown appeared to be the real deal. And I just want to make clear that uh, despite what was, you know, unarguably an impressive rally today or, or comeback, you know, especially the fact we went below Friday's lows, um, there's not a single thing that I see on the charts in the technicals right now that tells me this wasn't anything more than that snapback rally. If you go back again, look at that video reference post going back on the sites all the way, you know, to at least to the beginning of this month. I had the scenario once we broke 116, a bounce, uh, you know, on or off this level. We overshot it just a little bit, that 114.12. And um, that's the initial snapback rally that I was looking for. Uh, carried up to the high end of my, my expectations. And the video I had mentioned, I said one, I believe 116.60. I didn't have a line there at the time, and I was just eyeballing the price scaling over here. Uh, but this morning I corrected that to say, you know, uh, my preference would be to if to start shorting a move back up as we, you know, anywhere as we approach the underneath the 116 area and short add short exposure or for those of you that aren't already in uh, any shorts uh, short up to the 11650 level and um, and then not above that if the market continues on this week um, then we enter this gap right here. I'm, I'm referring to the large gap from Friday. Gaps once entered from below are usually backfilled, or if they're entered from above, either way, they're they're often backfilled. Um, of course, it would be uh, pretty bearish if we just pop into the gap and then reverse. And that is uh, very much a possibility. So just watch things. If we gap up tomorrow, if the markets gap up, as I said in the videos I mentioned before, as long as we remain uh, below, uh, we don't take out um, by a good margin. I'm talking a 60-minute close above the top of that gap, which would be where we closed on uh, Thursday. Um, then the bearish scenarios is very much intact. Um, so again, nothing in it that I see in the charts, but a snapback rally. And if you take a look here, this is what I, th I think will happen. I'll give you my my expected scenario. I'm going to draw it out for you here. Um, so we had this back test here of the bottom of that trading range. You know, came a little bit, a little bit uh, uh, into it, but again, really just coming up to where we, um, the bottom of the gap on, on um, Friday's gap, which is almost like a magnet when you have these gaps and you get close to them, tops or bottoms or like magnets. So what I would expect, whether we get a little pop tomorrow or not, we could cap down. Uh, I think the market will start moving down as and if we approach these lows. Uh, first of all, if we fall back below 116, that will be pretty bearish in itself. See, the bulls, you know, want to say they took control, and I'm, I'm speaking metaphorically speaking, and you know, bulls, bears, it's really the markets about supply and demand, more buyers versus sellers. There's long shorts. Um, there's, there's all kinds of things there. So I'm just speaking you know, and, and tongue here, talking about the bulls versus the bears. The bulls, so to speak, need to hold that level. They regained 116, which obviously was a well-watched level. The impulsive selling kicked in yesterday. I think if you, you know, you need to be a proficient chart reader to see that that really was the bottom of this month-long sideways trading range. Uh, so now there really should be no reason, especially if this was a bullish day today, some type of bullish reversal, not just a snapback rally, maybe with some short covering that fueled it up at the end. I don't see any reason why the market should go much below 116 tomorrow. And if it does, I think that will be the consensus among both longs and shorts or bulls and bears alike, let's say. In other words, bulls that regretted not selling, got caught up, didn't weren't really watching the charts, maybe those that uh, don't even trade full-time, came home, heard about the bad day, uh, they had they have this chance to uh, to get back out now. 
Now, if prices start moving back below that level, I think you'll see an acceleration of selling as we get there with some longs bailing out, um, shorts piling in, and I think we'll just slice right through uh, today's lows. That's my expectation and come down to that 1075 area. Um, one of the things that I look at, as you guys know, I, I put a lot of focus on these trend indicators. However, once the markets are moving, what I mean by that is trend indicators, and I often say this, are, are pretty useless during periods of consolidation, like this month-long consolidation here. You can see the, uh, although the MACD did a great job, I talk about the zero, uh, the 9 EMA, I'm sorry, the signal line being a trend indicator when it crosses above zero as it did here. We had a little bit of whipsaw here where it went below and then a little bit of whipsaw when it went back above. That was largely due to the fact we were in a sideways, a very tight sideways trading range. What happens is the you can't really extrapolate or interpret too much from the trend indicators when you're in a sideways trading range. The whole nature of the thing, there is no trend. The trend is sloppy. Uh, so these whipsaw signals are were, shouldn't have been a big surprise. Um, but with that being said, we finally, volatility has spiked. The VIX was was up something crazy. What was it, 30% or so, whatever I mentioned the other day. Uh, big, big, big gain in the VIX. Uh, gave some of that, a lot of that back today, but not all of it. More importantly, that means we've broken out of the trading range. And you can see this trend indicator here. The 1333 histogram is clearly bearish, as is the MACD with that 9 EMA well below the zero level deeply below it not just slightly it didn't limp through it came down impulsively now where i'm going with this is i, I drew out the scenario that i that i favor at this point and that's a move back you know down to that 10 110 75 ish area and to draw it out here for you um i would i would favor at least a some bullish divergence in other words i'm drawing out the macd here the macd put in a a uh a, a low today a peak low but it hasn't put in a second low if it were to do so along with the rsi coming here putting in a higher low i should say the 1333 histogram a higher low and what we have here in that case or what we would have here is bullish divergence and that's that's something i like to i look i like to look for for a swing trade whether if i'm currently short and i want to cover uh, maybe go long i like to see the bullish divergence it uh, helps you know, confirm a, a, a tradable, if you will, tradable trend reversal. And uh, we don't have that yet. All we have is a bullish crossover with one reaction low so far. So that's one scenario. And um, again, not to spend too much time or really go out to the weekly charts, but I've covered that in detail. The divergence is in place on the weekly charts. We had some pretty bearish candlesticks put in last week. And what that tells me is I am completely open to the possibility that we may just burn through any divergences uh, we could slice through through this level or any of these support levels um, with little to no reactions at all um, so depending on what I see going forward and again assuming this plays out and then I'm not stopped out below uh, you know with a move above the top of that gap I mentioned that is a level I'd be concerned where we closed on Thursday um, this is where I think the market has no business being and if it does if it takes out that gap and then moves above the top of it especially on a 60 minute close that just opens the door for new highs and that would have completely wiped out this breakdown and and, and really at that point, tell me this is something more than just a snapback rally, that this was probably a bear trap or a false breakdown, in which case I would begin to rapidly cover a lot of the shorts that I have. So uh, there's the scenarios. And again, I'm open to all possibilities and I'm trying to stay flexible uh, because the charts, the longer term charts, we're only looking at the 60 minute charts here. Uh, they do uh, still uh, to me look very bearish and uh, it all plays into this whether we come up here now or not whether the, whether we start a decent sell-off here or not in tone and less those divergences and all the other bearish developments on the longer term charts uh, super low short interest all these things that I've talked about uh, unless those are, are are wiped out on the charts then I continue to favor uh, a downside. And I'm telling you, I'm just looking at the charts. I'm looking at short interest. I'm looking at sentiment, things that have, that have happened over the last um, built up for, for months now, many months. Uh, the possibility for a very sharp 
sell off. I'm talking something, you know, uh, much larger than what we saw Friday. Uh, it certainly exists right now in the market. Doesn't mean we're going to have to have that, but uh, if it if it comes, those are the times where you can make very very sharp gains and, and very short order. And uh, as I said, it's in the charts. That's all I can say. So right now I'm trading the charts. If this proves to be wrong, I had a lot of short exposure. I increased my short exposure uh, throughout the afternoon all the way up to that level. We stopped cold at 116.49 was the high of the day versus that uh, level of 116.51 I talked about right here, that horizontal line. And um, it looks good. Uh, let's look at the components of the queues. We'll wrap it up. I did I did a quick video this morning, uh, under seven minutes, just talking about the top components. Uh, because as I mentioned, if you can t just get a good feel on where the top 10 components of the QQQ or the NASDAQ 100 are going, that gives you a really good idea where the NASDAQ itself is going because the NASDAQ 100, uh, you know, the top 10 components make up over half the weighting of the entire you know, 105 stocks that are in there, the whole the NASDAQ 100 index. So here's Apple. Apple, as I pointed out this morning, again, you can check that video. There's a big gap down here. You can see this gap from here all the way up to here. Massive gap. We came down, kissed the top of that gap. And as I said this morning, it is not only unusual, it's, it would be unusual not to see a reaction on the initial tag of a, of a big gap like that from above. Very rare to just slice on through it like it's not even there. So there's that initial reaction. Now where we go from here, that that's that's the important thing. Note that we also bounced into resistance. You, these two lines are a resistance zone. You can see the lows right here. You can see some reactions, a little gap there, reaction highs, quite a few reactions. Um, so uh, look at the, everything is in bearish territory here. The trend indicators, the MACD, the 1333 histogram. So I think Apple will likely reverse. And we've already had that initial uh, reaction off the top of that gap. I think the next time we head down, it take we at least take out the bottom of that gap. I should clarify the, there's, there's some price resistance there. That's why I stopped that arrow. But the the bottom of the gap is really all the way down here so we could we could continue on down through there so that's apple let's take a look at a few more here's alphabet uh g o o g l which is alphabet class a this is a minor resistance level here you can see a reaction we have to zoom in there's a gap right there so you can see the reactions as i go to the left anywhere you see a candlestick come and prices reverse you know, reactions, reactions, reactions. So what I would call a minor resistance level. The big resistance is the uh, recent highs. Um, the other share class, there it is. You can see we entered the gap on that share class. The other, the first one held, class A held, held the gap, had a reaction. And alphabet uh, G-O-O-G went into the gap, snapped back up. And uh, can't take too much more from there. There's Microsoft. <coughs> Very big gap right here, and Microsoft, uh, as I mentioned in the video today, a lot like the Qs, uh, has its recent month-long trading range, except Microsoft has yet to break below there. So these are the levels that I'm watching. I'm watching on, on Q, everything I mentioned on QQQ, and if you look at Microsoft, look at this horizontal line that we're at. Look at look how many reactions as I go to the left of this line here. You can see all the reactions there, reactions from below over here. So this is a pretty significant resistance level with, with additional, a lot of overhead supply, uh, meaning resistance. You look at all these trades up here. So Microsoft has its work cut out for it. Trend indicators are rolling over to bearish, uh, have rolled over. And uh, again, watch these stocks. If Microsoft comes in and takes out today's lows, it'll enter this gap and will most likely backfill that gap. Uh, in relatively short order, and that's going to bring the queues down. Uh, Microsoft, by the way, you know, I'm, I'm focusing on the near-term charts now, but everything is built in. If you just look at this line here, from this peak in the MACD to this lower peak, RSI, that's negative divergence. The lines that I'm highlighting here with the MACD making lower highs, uh, and this is a consistent theme that I'm seeing in, in just about all the leading stocks. This is a big divergent high. This is a two-year daily chart. That's a big divergent high on, on Microsoft. And mo most importantly, like a lot of things, this divergent high comes after a failed breakout. This was a breakout to new highs here. 
a multi-year or all-time highs. I have to go back. I believe that's all-time highs on Microsoft. And that has that has failed. We close right about on that level. And that's this is why it's so important. We're at such a critical juncture. It's that same, you could get rid of that. You can see we're right about on that line. So Microsoft sort of in a, what I call a technical, precarious technical position. And let's see what happens. And there's that gap. Uh, having a tough time with these drawing tools, but uh, there's that big gap below. So if we get into that gap, that gap will likely be backfilled. And uh, if that's the case, and you can certainly write this breakout off as a failed breakout, i.e. Uh, bull trap. And the divergences are what tell me that more than likely we're going to see some downside here. Uh, there's work to be done. MACD is still currently in bullish territory above the zero line, but look how it's pointed straight down. And uh, we haven't even become over oversold yet on the RSI. So uh, that's just a quick zoom out to the longer term chart on Microsoft. And uh, Facebook, eh, not too much on the 60 minute chart. It's just back testing this minor uh, uptrend line today. Amazon, again, all these I went over in the video today. So you could take a look at that. But uh, you know, there it is. There's Intel, semis. There's a, a downtrend line that was taken out and a breakout. There was some some pretty significant resistance here as well as that downtrend line. And, you know, it's flirting right now with a potential. Uh, it's either going to hold that back test of that recent breakout and move higher or it's going to fail that that breakout. And uh, fewer things in trading are, are more bearish than a failed breakout. Um, because you have a lot of positioning to the other side. The bulls that chased this or took this breakout, the shorts that covered on it, um, if the breakout fails, you'll see the long sell, you'll see shorts pile back in, take advantage of that. And like so many other things, again, we're looking at the daily chart, negative divergence. Um, that's what I do day in, day out. I look for these divergent highs and lows. I look for other confirming signs in the charts, other things that I look for. And... Um, more often than not, they work out. They they play out for a trend reversal. All right, so let me look. Let me just go over one more thing. We'll wrap it up here. I don't want to beat a dead horse. I shared my opinion. All right, here's the daily chart of the cues, and uh, let's find a clean board here. All right, uh, you know somebody may mention the trading room. This you know, big green bullish looking candlestick, and of course, by all accounts, that's a huge green candlestick. I'm going to give you my take on this. All right, let's look at the candlestick and let's look at what happened the day before as well. So we're going to take a look at these two candlesticks here. Now, uh, I scanned the charts. I went to the left and you see a few other candlesticks around this side. Do you see these two candlesticks here? Here's a big red bearish engulfing candlestick. Almost match. I'm not, it's not a bearish engulfing. I'm sorry, a big red bearish candlestick. And then you have next to that the green candlestick. All right, let me, that's an annoying circle. That line keeps popping up. Let's try to move that away a little bit. Yeah, no matter what, it'll be in the center. All right, we'll close that back up. And so there, there's the candlesticks that I'm, that I'm working on. These two and these two. Um, let's draw out, let's do this for you real quick. Let's draw this candlestick out here. To try to just get an idea of the scope of that, there it is. So there's there's the size of that candlestick. I might have went a little bit larger. There's the big green candlestick today. And as I move this over here, put it next to that one, I think you can make that out. All right, so those two candlesticks, we'll move that away, are almost identical in size. They also, this one came after a big, very bearish red candlestick and also came after this period of consolidation. Let's draw it out for you here. This was a much more choppy period of consolidation, but the market was moving sideways for a while. I'm going to get rid of these guys here. Clean this chart up a little bit. All right, so what am I getting at? Well, big green candlesticks are certainly bullish, but I see from the look of this chart, they're bullish when they come off lows. Like you have a, here's one after a, a big sell-off, a comparable green candlestick. We rallied. Um... Uh, I did this and I'll have to do it on the SPY. I already did this on the SPY and there were more green candlesticks, clearly bullish ones off the lows. Here's another one that came after a sharp downtrend. And uh, you can go back in time and do this as well. Point being, I don't see any of these 
near a high when market when the market was at a high the only one that I can see going back and this is two years I looked on this chart I looked on the spy is this very similar period here we had the big red selling down day uh, you can see and we'll zoom in for you just a little bit here uh, that, that the only difference is that green candlestick back then managed to take out the previous the highs of the previous day on the red one now if you look what happened from there uh, from that point that was it that big green candlestick that came after the big red candlestick preceded a, a an 18 percent drop in the queues um, so uh, you know it's that's a small sampling period uh, I'll admit that but uh, this doesn't scare me and, and in fact these are your snapback rallies you get near highs you have a lot of when the market's at or near new highs especially all-time highs you have a ton of bullish people that, that think the market will go up forever and they feel like they're missing out and they want to buy the first dip so they think that was a big buying opportunity I think that's what we're seeing here uh, there's still a lot of resistance overhead there's that gap to contend with uh, so I just want to share this this green candlestick um, you know look at the posture of the MACD look at everything else it looks so similar to that move and again that's that's what we saw after the markets never after that day that was it they turned around and you know the drop wasn't immediate we started reversing we came back up failed to get back to those levels a few failed attempts and then rolled over and I don't you know you can't expect it to always play out the same and uh, I'll bring up the SPY just to show you so there it is on the spy same story there's a, the big green candlestick and you know it looks intimidating looks very bullish uh, there's the one back from the same one uh, that I just highlighted on the queues back on uh, December these were the sticks from December 3rd and 4th and December 3rd the red stick December 4th the green stick and I might have drawn it a little big there but you can see same story with the uh, uh, QQQs and here's some of those green ones that I talked about let's see we have a big here it is see big green candlestick coming off the lows that's where you want to see these big green candlesticks uh, I mean, I'm sure if you're bullish you want to see them anywhere but uh, uh, I just wanted to point that out that uh, as of now unless there's follow through and unless that gap is filled and if it is then we're so close to the highs and we might as well just go ahead and run with it um, yeah, but uh, I'm looking at uh, a lot on the charts that indicate uh, that uh, that we're probably not going to see much follow through on that and if we do stops aren't too far ab above uh, mentioned and then there's not enough time I want to cut this video here short I mentioned the trading room a lot of the short trade ideas that's the other thing looking at the short trade ideas as well as so many of these stocks even if they're not short trade ideas you know the top components of the queues um, we have a lot coming back to resistance well I just did that on the 60 minute chart and um, I think I lied I'll go over the uh, semis real quick because that's another sector we're short uh, there's SMH there's stocks like applied materials uh, you can see the bearish rising wedge back test to AMAT uh, what else do we have we had um, uh, Broadcom and you can see Broadcom, Broadcom hit that second support level uh, where a reaction was expected you know, we hit it on Friday we came back up but there's still plenty of resistance overhead and um, this still looks like a very bearish chart to me and finally uh, NVIDIA was another one uh, that's one that took out you know forever and a day actually since it, it was a trade setup to uh, active trade 6063 that area in there is, uh, was support you can see the support shelf we broke below it and what where do we close today we came right back up to close right about on the I have the two lines there that you can really zoom in and see uh, there's some reactions 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 there 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 and that's exactly where we close so again looking overall I'm seeing just a, a breakdown in the charts both on the queues a lot of stocks not all of them a few are holding up so far but most of those that have broken down that I'm following have simply pushed back to resistance today and that is trading 101 you short a break of support support once broken becomes resistance you can overthink this market all day long second guess your trades um, but uh, you know I have a trading plan that was it I'm gonna go in stick by the plan stick with the charts have faith in those and if the, you know if the charts don't work out or my read on the charts was incorrect then you know the stops on a lot of these trades aren't too far ahead 
uh, overhead. So this is what I talk about, tremendous risk re to reward. And when I mentioned in the trading room today, shorting the cues on that bounce back up to where we were, um, by that, what I mean by excellent or very objective trade with good RR, it doesn't mean that this trade has the highest probability of trading uh, playing out. We could certainly see us, you know, go through here. The trend indicators on, on long term, intermediate term are still bullish, which means this is a counter trend trade. So therefore, it has a greater chance of failing. However, what does that mean if it fails? Well, from if you shorted, at, let's say even 116, let's say you didn't even wait to 116.50, you shorted at 116, uh, you're looking at that point a stop that's just over 1% for what could be, if these long-term charts play out, uh, you know, a, a drop of, you know, 28, 30%, possibly, you know, 38% if if the charts play out the way I think they might. For a one to two percent stop loss, that is what I talk about being objective. And if you take those trades often enough, they will pan out. Sure, you'll be stopped out, you know, on a few. And if you stick with, you know, that that attractive risk reward ratio and those objective entries more often than not, um, you'll uh, uh, the trades will go your way. And even if you're, I probably said that wrong. Your success rate doesn't have to be. Uh, you know, 90, 100%. Uh, if you're if you're taking, you know, one, two, three percent stop stops on trades, you're getting stopped out on a few, and then the next one hits for a 20, 30 percent gain. That more than makes up for you know three trades that were stopped out for two, three percent stop loss. All right, this has been Randy Finney. I'll leave it there, and uh, let's see what happens tomorrow. I'll keep you updated throughout the week.